Hi everyone, today I'll be doing a quick review of Moto My UI 5.0 for me at all which are Redmi Note 9s, Note 9 Pro, Pro Max and Poco M2 Pro. The ROM has been ported from a Moto G Stylus 5G by Jamie and it is based on Android 13 which is quite impressive because you're not only getting taste of a different UX but also the latest Android which is not officially available for this device. This is a global build so you won't get Motorola apps such as Dialer or Messages and instead you'll get Google apps. Let's explore the settings to see what's inside. You see there's not much to customize given that it's a stock ROM port but still there are some things that you can customize for instance the QS panel. If you go to home screen and lock screen settings and then lock screen you'll see this setting called double line clock disabling which will reduce large lock screen clock. You'll find more of cool features inside display settings such as attentive display, peak display and refresh rate. 120Hz option is present but it's not gonna work. Three finger screenshot feature is also there and I thought it should have no problem running but unfortunately this basic feature failed to run. It might be so because it's an initial build. However, some other features work flawlessly like this double press power key feature. You can launch assistant or camera by pressing key twice with this feature. Moving on to the security settings, this build is equipped with ThinkShield security and the data on this build is also encrypted. We also get the secure folder feature which is a pretty useful feature to keep your private files secure. There are some Motorola apps available in this board though. Number one is Moto. Yes, just Moto. It's kind of an extended digital user manual. Number two is interactive wallpaper. It's basically a wallpaper app that lets you download and set dynamic wallpapers and it's exclusive to my UI. And the wallpapers are, are quite cool. Next up we have Moto Secure app which provides you with many useful security features. And lastly, we have Spaces app which lets you add multiple users on your device so that every user has its own private space. Even though the port has limited customization options, you still can make it the way you like. In personalized section, you can customize many UI elements. However, they all don't work as intended due to some missing Moto apps but some other elements work perfectly fine like Monet Engine and from right here you can enable themed icons. You also get some fonts pre-installed in the font section for you to choose from to customize your font the way you like. You also can customize the app icons shape and not very exclusive but you can also find the display size settings right here which will save you from digging it deep inside setting. Here you can customize the app grid, you can choose from many options available here. You can choose your ringtones etc from here. And from here you can enable or disable dark mode. Even though this phone does not have an AMOLED display, I'd have preferred pure black rather than grey. Now here's the thing that I wish this ROM didn't have. If I go to recents menu and kill all the running apps and I even get a toast message that the apps have been closed but they aren't actually. You go to recents again and then right here like nothing ever happened. The maintainer actually mentions this bug and recommends using quick switch. The other one thing that forced me to switch to another room was that I was unable to spot nearby share. Now you'd say that I should have updated Google Play services right? But come on this is Android 13 it should have been enabled by default. I didn't even find it in settings. Let's take a CPU throttling test cause everybody does it. No I'm kidding. It really helps to see how a ROM will handle heavy tasks. You can see the yellow lines which means it is throttling the CPU and that means your gaming experience or whatever heavy task you perform will be compromised. Now to conclude, it was quite a refreshing experience for me. The ROM feels fluid and smooth just like an USB ROM and it also doesn't have unnecessary settings that are abundant in many custom ROMs these days. One more great thing about this ROM is its battery performance. Unlike many ports that I have tried, this one seemed quite stable in terms of battery. Plus there are some handy battery features like overcharge protection and optimized charging. 
However, it takes some time for the ROM to settle well and run things smoothly. So that's it. Hope you have an idea now whether this ROM is good for you. And before leaving, make sure to hit like, share, and subscribe to my channel.